and are the excellent protectors of the moral compass. I quite like that. A day spent recently in the beautiful city of Bath brought back memories of a crime committed there 20 years ago for which I seek forgiveness. I say Georgie is a girl, by the way. Okay. I was there with my husband Owen for his dad and partner's wedding. Both in our 20s, this would normally be a case of get up, get dressed, go to the wedding. But the recent arrival of our son Jonah meant that now things weren't quite so simple. That morning, having been up for most of the night with our newborn, we overslept. Dressing and eating hurriedly in turn, we rushed out of the door, dashing back to change, redress and top up Jonah one more time. We arrived at the registry office, along with Owen's stepsister and husband and their new baby Katie to enjoy a lovely service, and afterwards the walk to the reception in a very smart hotel nearby. We were greeted by a friendly young concierge who ushered us all through the beautiful surroundings to the function room. Jonah and Katie, obviously sensing the importance of the occasion, were by now fast asleep, as babies are wont to do occasionally. So congratulating ourselves on our prowess as parents, we relaxed, chatted and enjoyed some food uninterrupted for once. Soon, however, the babies stirred. Their cries increasing, Owen's stepsister and I disappeared off to the honeymoon suite, which the bride and groom had helpfully made available for us uh, to feed and change in peace and quiet. The honeymoon suite was beautiful. Sinking into sofas, we chatted as the little ones fed, and it was at this point that a plan formed in my mind. Remembering that my camera was in my changing bag, different times, obviously no smartphones, I suggested that it might be fun to take some photos of the babies sitting on the four-poster bed and give the finished film as a present to the bride and groom. Giggling, we were soon propping our babies up in various poses around the room and snapping away, <laughs> excited at the prospect of the film being picked up by the newlyweds after processing. And so you might think you know which way this is going to go, but you'd be wrong. Jonah was a big baby, and all this activity had made him hungry, so as the others left, I stayed behind to feed him once more. We must have taken our time, and suddenly the telephone in the room rang. It was my husband checking that I was okay and telling me that the speeches were starting. Enjoying the piece, I'd forgotten all about it, to be honest. Grabbing my belongings... Just forgot I was just in a random room, just having a nice time. Grabbing my belongings, I carefully balanced the now snoring Jonah over my shoulder and headed back. In the corridor outside, a waiter, delivering some food to a nearby room, smiled at me but then blushed suddenly and turned away. Clearly avoiding my eyes, I rushed past. In the foyer, I nodded to the concierge at his desk. He too smiled cheerfully, <laughs> although the smile <laughs> seemed got it. fixed to his face as he appeared rooted to the spot. Obviously, he was stunned by the sight of a beautiful child asleep in my arms. I arrived as my father-in-law got to his feet to deliver his speech, and everyone was listening intently. Dropping my bag, I gave a thumbs up to Owen and then pointed triumphantly to, at our sleeping son, conveying the message, <laughs> Result! Look what I've done! <laughs> to my bewilderment, his own smile disappeared and colour rose in his cheeks too. He stood very slowly and made his way towards me, squeezing between chairs as fast as he could, apologising to relatives, his eyes on me the whole time. He was making a kind of urgent swishing movement with his hands and staring at a point somewhere on my blouse. Well, I was completely confused. What was his problem? Our son was clean, dry, full, and asleep. What is he going to be complaining about? Reaching me, Owen hissed one word, and the word was buttons, and pointed at me again. And looking down, I realised with total horror that in my rush to get back to the party, I had completely forgotten to fasten up having fed Jonah and, in capital letters, everything was on show. <laughs> so that everything was on show. As I bundled our baby back to my husband and fumbled with clips and buttons, the reactions of the people I'd seen on the way made perfect sense. They'd expected a normal day at work, but had been flashed by a young mother, and I felt <laughs> dreadful for them. Later, the reception was over. I was relieved to see that the concierge had finished his shift and was no longer at the reception desk. I seek forgiveness clearly from the concierge, the waiter, my husband, Owen, for causing so much embarrassment. I offer to my apologies to Jonah, now at university, <laughs> for being such a clumsy <laughs> and inexpert parent. I suspect there'll be a few other stories along these lines shortly. Finally, I seek forgiveness from my in-laws, for although they enjoyed the results of our photographic session, the unexpected wedding gift of a small, round, slightly smelly pink bag tied at the top that had been left on their honeymoon bed probably wasn't quite so welcome but that wasn't the star of the show it was me that was the star of the show and that's georgie uh, sending in 
uh, tonight's tale. She just forgot it was... There's a lot going on. She's very tired. A lot to take on board. She just forgot. That's all. Young Joe. Easily done. We've all done it. Well, not all of us have done it, but many people will have done exactly this. There's no way that Georgie needs any kind of judgment. Uh, she's completely and utterly forgiven because, like you say, she's got so much going on. She was having a nice time. We even forgot that she was at a wedding because she was just yes. kind of free. That's the key phrase. I think she forgot she was at a wedding. <laughs> she's just enjoying the beast, having a really, really great time. And uh, I, I just love the bit Jonah was slung over her shoulder because that's what you kind of do with a baby. Obviously, you're gripping them firmly at the same time. But um, yeah, she's totally and utterly forgiven just for being a very busy mum, having a lovely time. Time, bit of a break. Young Bobby. I think it's known as a Judy Finnegan moment. Do you remember when Judy, oh, yes. and Judy went up on stage, collected an award, and unfortunately she wasn't feeding a baby, but similar kind of outcome. Ju- wardrobe malfunction. Definitely, definitely. The thing is, I love the way, actually, that everyone just kind of blushed and didn't say anything. But then what can you say? I mean, maybe it's meant to be like that. If you were the, you were the concierge and you were quite young, what would you say, Simon? I, if think, you met you'd a lady? Say, I think you'd say... On display? I think you'd say... What would you say anything? I would write would down a note, I would say. <laughs> you might wish to have a look at your the buttons. The thing is, you wouldn't want to offend yourself. That's what I love. I love the father-in-law. What The words he used were buttons. You might of just go, Of all the things uh, he could have uh, uh, used. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Buttons. Yeah, well, well, it wasn't buttons, was it? It was the problem. Of course you're forgiven. Bobby Poor got woman. to this much quicker than I did. I was just listening and thinking, what, what on earth is going on? So she just mimed to me the exact <laughs> thing that had happened. So they could have done that. They could have done that action that you did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not yes. doing it again. Obviously, no. It's on display. I can do it to Joe, but not you. <laughs> It'd be wrong. It would, it would be wrong, and thank you very 